What's up LEGO Builders? Welcome back to Coconut Brick Studios for the first official week of building Utapau in LEGO. This week is going to be a very good week for me especially because I can really sit down and decide, okay, what is this mock going to look like exactly? Because I can only draw so much, I can only imagine so much in, in my head. So today we're going to start putting brick down on plate. This will also be a good opportunity for you guys to really see and understand what exactly Utapau is going to look like because it's such an unusual mock being so vertical with cliffs and landing platforms it is a bit hard for me to explain. The first couple of weeks are going to be pretty much just rock work because I have to build so high up before I can even start working on the actual kind of mock itself if you will. But I've done enough stalling it's time for me to shut up and get building. To start off this First week of building Utapau, we've got a mini haul. It's just one package, but I thought it'd be fun to open it in the video. Uh, you guys have already seen me buy a bunch of this. This is a set that I got off of eBay, and you're probably gonna see more of these before this series finishes. Nonetheless, I am still very excited for what's inside. Wow, they packaged it very well. Let's see. So we have a Utapau Trooper Battle Pack. Looks like they shipped it assembled. So this is probably the tri-droid in here. I always think it's interesting when they when people send stuff assembled like this. We got the tri-droid. So this was um, on eBay and I got it for really cheap. It was like $43 plus shipping, which is really good for a Utapau Trooper Battle Pack. It didn't come with a box or instructions, but that's okay because I have lots of instructions and I have a box already. So I've got these great minifigures and that's it for this haul. Let's go start building. As you guys can see, I have not started the base of Utapau whatsoever. Um, I did get these cool little uh, posters, little random side tangent. These were made at my work and they are absolutely incredible. The detail that went into these is just insane. We've got ourselves a Darth Vader and the Mandalorian with the very popular Baby Yoda. So when I set up my new studio, these are definitely going to be kind of, I don't want to say the focal point, but definitely a very integral part of that. So I'm going to get these posters out of the way. I'm going to set up the base plates and then, I don't know, probably start building from there. It's really daunting to start a big mock like this. I'm sure once I get started, I'll get excited and start building. But as of right now, I'm just I'm kind of dreading it just because I have so much pressure but that's okay. Honestly, one of the hardest parts for me is actually starting the mock, just because I think about how much needs to get done, how cool this needs to be, what all needs to happen, and I obviously haven't even started. I don't know how I'm gonna get there, but I just gotta start putting brick down on plate and get going. Well, I guess it's time I give you guys an update because I have made a ton of progress. So I laid down the base plates and started working on the back. You can see I ran a ring of brick around the entire outside of the mock and I did that just to make sure this would be fairly stable and fairly concrete and then I began to work on the walls and this wall is going to be like the kind of rock face and it's turning out to be a real tough challenge for me just because it's very different from Ryloth if you guys remember Ryloth is like a mountain that kind of slopes backwards however these uh, walls in on Utapau are very straight there isn't a whole lot of slope or angle to them which is really hard to capture as you guys can see I'm really kind of struggling with that I started out over here using a lot of slope pieces but as we fade over this way I start to add more brick in with the slopes to kind of keep that uh, angle a little bit steeper so that these rock walls don't angle too hard. Let me know down below in the comments if you guys think this is looking good. If you guys have any tips or suggestions for improving my rock, walk, rock work, please let me know. I have done some pretty cool little cracks right here. If you guys notice on Utapau, all throughout the rock walls, there's all kinds of like erosion and cracks and crevices so that has been fun i've put a lot of them in and i plan to put quite a few more in behind the mock we have this large scaffolding of green bricks kind of holding up the back wall it's actually kind of a cool little technique that i use instead of building off of the base and working my up with the brick my way up with the bricks i just tend to build on top of the existing bricks so it's almost going to have it's almost going to be like we're going to have this scaffolding hooked to the rock face itself but not necessarily hooked down to the base plate just kind of there to secure the bricks to each other and as you guys can see it's extremely sturdy so i'm very happy with that 
this is a pretty efficient way to use bricks because I don't use a whole lot. Here's kind of my plan going forward. So you guys can see I'm kind of sloping this direction in a bit of a half circle, if you will. And I'm doing this to kind of help capture that circular look that's so iconic to Utapau. The only problem is I'm going to have large areas of the gray base plate that are going to be exposed. And I'm still not 100% sure what I'm going to do about that. I was thinking about putting water right here. The only problem is the platforms that I'm going to be building are very high off the ground. They're not even close to water. And so I don't know if that would scale properly or if it would look weird. I'm thinking about just leaving it and then just kind of ignoring it and hope and hoping people don't notice it too much. But if you guys have any solutions for that, please let me know down below in the comments. Probably the last things I'm going to be working on for this update are adding a small little path right up here in this section. And then right here is the beginnings of a small cave. So once I get those two areas figured out, we're going to check back one more time for an update. I'm back with one final update for the week and I was able to get those two caves put in that I was talking about earlier. So the first one down here is kind of a more natural cave, something that a creature or some kind of animal would live in. It's not super deep, it's only two bricks deep. And behind it, I put a wall of black brick. And I really enjoy using this technique for caves because it allows me to kind of put a cool looking cave in there that looks kind of deep and got something going on there without actually having to put in all the work. So I might have some small creature or something perched right here on the mouth of the cave, but I don't plan on doing a whole lot with that. It's mostly just there for looks. Over here, higher up, we have a much cooler looking little tunnel. So this one is man-made. This one's been carved out of the rocks by the native Utapau people. And this one is more for like uh, secret comings and goings, kind of like a secret entrance to what's going on up here. So what I'm gonna have is a squad of two 12th troopers right here about to clear out this tunnel to make sure there's no droids or other CIS bad guys in there. And I made this path really small and narrow because I wanted to give this whole section a vibe of like, don't enter, this is not a place you should go, kind of like a very dangerous and precarious little secret entrance. Just like the other lower cave, I've got that wall of black brick in to kind of help give that vibe that the tunnel or cave is much deeper than it actually is. That wraps up this week of building Utapau. I made real good progress. I'm real happy with the rock work. It's starting to turn out better and look a lot better. Um, I got about halfway done with the rock work, so next week we're going to be tackling this half. I want to get this whole front part connected before I build super high because I don't want there to be two different sections or large chunks of rock that could be pushed on and broken in easily. I want this all to be interconnected. So I hope you guys are looking forward to more rock work next week. I'll, now that I've kind of got a lot of the experimentation done, I'll be able to show you guys firsthand like, all right, Here's kind of the techniques that I do for like the large cracks or other stuff like that because I didn't really show you guys too much of how I did that on this first one. But that being said, time to hit that outro. Week one is finally in the books. I'm so excited to have finally gotten started. Like I was saying in the beginning of my video, sometimes it can be really hard to start giant mocks like this because they're so overwhelming and you know so much needs to get done, but it's nice to finally have just picked a spot, started, and now I'm definitely back into the mindset of building mocks. It's actually kind of hard for me to stop building. I really hope you guys enjoyed the progress you saw this week. Don't forget to let me know what you thought down below in the comments. If you guys like this video, don't forget to leave me a big thumbs up. And as always, if you're new to this channel, please consider subscribing so you don't miss out on future content. But until next time, happy building.